I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. I've never seen money passed from one generation to another in a manner that actually benefited the recipient. Quite a statement. When a psychologist said that to me several years ago, I was pretty much dumbfounded. Why? Well, many parents scrimp, save, and sacrifice so they can leave something to the kids. Their intention is to do them good, not harm. It's really hard to accept that inheritances may actually do harm instead of the good that the parents want to have done. Most of us have money scripts that don't support that idea. Typically, I used to hold several money scripts around inheritances. One was that, a lo that leaving money to your children is a, a loving and a kind and a gracious thing to do. In other words, that parents should always leave money to their children. And a third was that anyone who received an inheritance would invest it wisely, using only the earnings to improve their lives. Well, today I know that those money scripts were not universal truths. I have more understanding of the problems involved in giving money away in a manner that's beneficial to the receiver. It isn't as easy as I once thought. Many parents envision inheritances for their kids as seed money. Uh, it will be used for the health and education, welfare of their offspring, hopefully for many generations. Research shows, though, that this is rarely the case. Instead, inherited wealth does not last long. Missy Sullivan summarizes some of the research in Lost Inheritances, a Wall Street Journal article published online March 7th of 2013. According to this article, 70% of those who receive an inheritance of any size spend it all in their lifetime. For the 30% that do have something less to pass, left to pass on, 70% of those kids blow everything they get. Now, if you do the math, that means by the end of the third generation, 90% of the money originally passed down is gone. While it's easy to understand how an inheritance of $10,000 may evaporate, it's really difficult for me to grasp that inheritances in the hundreds of millions of dollars evaporate just as quickly. How is that possible? Is the average American just incompetent in managing money? Well, according to Sullivan, a study done by the Williams Group found that poor investment decisions were not the main culprit. About 60% of large inheritances disappeared because of a lack of trust and communication between family members. Another 25% of the time, money evaporated because the parents failed to prepare the next generation in how to handle their impending inheritance. So poor investment advice and high fees were the cause in less than 15% of the cases. If more high net worth parents knew that only 10% of their hard earned estates would be around at the end of their grandchildren's lives, I wonder if they might do some things a little bit differently. There's a few options, you know. One option would be to address the two biggest issues, the lack of communication and preparation for heirs, headed on during their lives. Parents wanting their money to benefit their kids can engage the services of a financial therapist who could help the family address their communication and trust issues. You know, a long time while they're alive. Preparing the kids to uh, manage the wealth and put it to use wisely could be the best way to increase the odds of making an inheritance a blessing rather than a burden. Well, that aside, another option would be to secure their own retirement and then forget all the scrimping and saving and just have fun blowing the money on themselves. Die broke. I'd say 98% of my clients have the goal of dying broke. Still, another option would be to give their wealth to worthy causes during their lifetimes so why they can see the good that it would do um, 
rather than upon their death, or even upon their death, give it to charity. This would leave the kids to make money by ingenuity, hard work, wise money management, frugality, and a little bit of luck. Same way that their parents did. Thanks for listening.